Um, and finally, I'll come to my topic where I started the subject was a sequence comparison. And the methods where I talk about you, you essentially have to look at each, um, each um, pair of letters uh, is uh, dynamic programming methods uh, do that. And people very early on were using sequences to, uh, to uh, discover evolutionary relationships. And then the problem became finding pieces of sequences related to pe closely related to pieces of other sequences. And uh, this is an area that required some sophisticated statistics and some serious algorithmics. So a picture of what we used to do, what we still do. Uh, this is under the heading of what are we doing and why are we doing it. Uh, here, the, the, those two words, you imagine there was a great grandmother word up there. And both these words are descendants. And so um, the W and the H came through unchanged. Uh, either the A was added to WHT or it was erased from WHY. Who knows? Uh, but that's, that's the so-called insertion deletions. Now I've got the wrong pointer. This guy should be in good shape. Yeah, so this is the insertion deletion. Makes the combinatorics hard, you can imagine. And here's a substitution. T would change to Y or the other way around. So you score these things, and you look for the maximum scoring alignment out of all alignments. And there are an exponential number of these, and so on. The global alignment problem is finding the maximum over all this exponential number of alignments uh, of, of the score of the alignment. And there's a quadratic space and time dynamic programming algorithm for this. Um, local alignment, which is the modern problem, uh, looks for two piece of each sequence that has the maximum uh, similarity score. And that goes back to uh, Temple Smith and myself, but it's the, under, it's the underlying motive for a blast. Anybody here heard a blast before? Very good. This is the most used computer software by biologists outside of their their word, their, their word processing. This is used, just used thousands of times, probably every few seconds. We're here, and uh, and 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 indeed, as a, as a subroutine of that, our, our algorithm comes in in a restricted way. But it's not fast enough. So I guess that's that's the theme I want to strike here. So uh, this is what people would do if they could, but it's way too slow. So uh, this is a heuristic with some sophisticated statistics and some not not necessarily sophisticated computer science in the end, but uh, it's um, really an, in an incredible piece of software. It's everywhere. So when we've got lots and lots and lots of sequences, how do we decide which one to look at more carefully? And um, in this scheme, which I'll just brush over this at the end and then leave you, in this scheme, uh, we're not going to do any alignment. We're just going to look at each sequence, look at the statistics, and make some comparison. So uh, the idea here would you could think of k again. Maybe k is 3 or 4. And you look at the statistics of the, say, four-letter sequences in A, the statistics of four-letter sequences in B, and you just do this dot product. You multiply the number of d words w that was in A times the number of words b uh, w that was in B and do this. And you hope if this is bigger, it's going to be more likely to actually have some genuine relationship. Um, we're giving up what we know about biology, the things being. Yes, please. Please. Two sequences. Yes. IID. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Th that's my, that's my. Is yeah, yeah. What about the. Uh, I certainly would assume there is. That's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the, um, the working assumption for our analysis. Our, our aim is to, is to discover sequences that, that we would discover with the other algorithms. So our, our aim is a linear time screening to identify some pairs of sequences you want to look at more closely. So we're trying to winnow it out. This is not a sophisticated those sequences that will give you maximum information? Is that I, I don't know about maximum information. Oh, uh, what I would do is, well, ideally, you would like to pick out the sequences that would give the maximal alignment score under this scheme. 
but you're not, you're, of course you're not going to do that, but that's what you'd like. You just can't run that computation. So this is called alignment free now. It's become very popular. Um, so once again, we went from something we used to do to BLAST to something even beyond BLAST, although simpler than BLAST. Uh, and it ended up that this, uh, this technique, which has um, been around quite a while, um, had a, an incredible statistical flaw that, of course, is a statistician. We loved uh, working on it. And I can kind of show you what's going on. So statisticians love to center things, subtract the mean. So if we take, we do D2 centered, and so we take the, the numbers in the X sequence or A sequence, uh, subtract the mean, numbers in the Y sequence, subtract the mean, and then we write out D2 this way. It almost gives you a clue of where the problem is. Um, if the underlying alphabet is uniform, then this is a constant, and this is a constant, and this whole thing just comes out to being a constant. So your, your, vari your variability is just in this D2 centered. But if they're not uniform, then this has variability and in fact changes even the variance of the D2 statistic. It's cubic variance if it's the alphabet's not uniform, and it's quadratic if it is, and misleading uh, actually if it's, if it's not uniform. So anyway, it gave us a lot, of, uh, a lot of room to work. We picked up a statistic by Larry Shep, who was a st uh, probably a statistics guy, died a year or two, yeah, about a year ago. He was a character. He went to, uh, he, he would go to, to Russia and uh, he worked very serious stochastic processes and tried to get the, and tried to get the KGB mad at him. I mean, he was amazing, uh, a, trouble, a troublemaker. And in 1964, when he, must have, when he was, must have been a baby, he had this problem in, in, Siam, in um, the Siam Journal that Filler included in volume two. And he said, if x and y are mean zero normals, then x times y divided the square root of the sum of the squares is also uh, normal. And we like that a lot because this looks like very sort of nor self-normalizing statistic. And so we added uh, a Shep version of our normalized statistic to this. And this is really the, the version that gets used the most.